Alrighty, we are live on air on uh, Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. Right. So every hey, you're driving again. Can you turn your mic down about to one third? One third down by Walt Silver. Uh, sure. Well, guided by spirits or angels or there guides. we go. Want to know who they are and what special message they may have for you? Have Walt Silver take a shamanic journey to contact. We are his uh, we are linking. Uh, they have a tool to help you in the form of... Down a bit more. Down a bit more, okay. Yep. Go to Cosmic Going Reality Connect. How's that? Walt Silver Butter. Walt Silver, a member of the Wolf Pack. How's that, JP? There Cosmic you go. Reality is Speak again. Store. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Yeah, tear down the it's when you it's when you actually are you on a fixed mic or is it on a headset? Um, the mic is through my webcam and my headset is the headphones. All right. Okay. All right. Well, here we go. Here goes everything. I, I hope everybody's connecting. You're connected on your end, right? Yeah. Um, we're we're right. good. We're good with that. We're going now. We're going live in about five seconds. There we go. Spirit Radio, everbeyondradio.com. Here in the south of Ireland, scottishsovereignsontheland.ning.com. And PSEC documentary on YouTube, just for one night. To leave your belief systems behind as we go beyond teachers, beyond gurus, beyond duality, ever beyond, beyond. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good God, what, are they, what am I doing? Um, here we go, there we go, um, I'm uh, just uh, running the next recorder, try to see if we can get a good high quality recording, who knows what's going to happen. Tonight is, we're, it's, it's boffin night, it's experimental night, we are doing hmm. something that uh, nobody's done before, well I don't know if anybody's done before, I probably as far as we before, know, as far as we know. But no, nobody does in in the general thing, um, and nobody's done it um, uh, with on a complete shoestring like we do. I think that's the unique thing um, that not one penny will be spent on this on this event. <laughs> anyway, so we have a uh, old old hand and uh, and friend of the uh, of the show, Dave Kelso, uh, <laughs> otherwise known as Time Warrior from the days gone by. And um, he's over in Chicago, and uh, he's doing something. Well, actually, Dave, why don't you tell tell everybody, uh, introduce yourself, uh, uh, and um, uh, explain what exactly is going on your end? Because you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm on my regular station. I'm simulcasting to three stations just now. Uh, four, five. Okay, I so think. so list um, off who so list off who your sim. List off who you're simulcasting to, and then I'll list off what I'm doing. Okay, so first of all, we're uh, uh, in uh, Scotland. We're on Scottish Sovereigns on the Land .ning .com. In Ireland, we're on Tirana Star. Um, uh, that's uh, Tirana uh, TNS Radio, I think dot com. That's what you TNS. Has. Um, and uh, we're on Ever Beyond Radio. Uh, that's broadcasting from London, England. So we're, we've got the we've got the British Isles covered, and then um, that's being relayed across to uh, Wolf Spirit Radio uh, Studios A and B, um, and uh, I think that's about it from my end. How about you? Okay, are we on any on any FM relays, AM, FM radio, or are we just pure internet on your end? Not on my end, no. Okay, so I, I just wanted I just wanted to make sure so that you know if I accidentally slip out a swear word or something, nobody's owing anybody any money. Um, <laughs> unless you guys don't have the FCC. It's nice to be polite, but we haven't got any money anyway. 
anyway, so so, so let, let's 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 keep the keep the costs low <laughs> of any litigation okay. and and etc. So, so on my end, what we're doing, if people go to youtube.com forward slash PSEC documentary, they'll notice a little thing that says we're live, and um, they'll be able to click that. And they'll be able to see me in the Google Hangout here, and they'll also be able to hear you. So what I've done is, uh, as far as I can tell here, I have successfully established a Google Hangout Skype bridge. So anybody coming in on the Google Hangout, and they won't be able to see anybody on the Skype end, of course, but they'll be able to hear everybody on the Skype end. Everybody on the Skype end will be able to hear them. Um, we could bring, you know, Skype callers into the Google Hangout via Skype. Um, I also have a package that allows me to make, you know, unlimited calls in the United States and Canada. So, you know, I could bring in, you know, people with cellular phones, traditional telco, whatever. So, um, and of course, this is, you know, streaming out on YouTube, so that means it's getting recorded by YouTube as a YouTube video, so people could come back and watch that later. So people can actually see me sitting here talking and waving my hands around it, nothing like an idiot, and they can hear you. So people can, right now, I'm the only one on the, um, on the Google Hangout end, um, Katarina Edwards Roy and Paul Roy are still out and about and hopefully will be able to join us soon. Um, I did let Max Egan and Vinny Eastwood know about this and I haven't heard back from either of them so I think it's probably um, safe to say that they will not be uh, participating. Most likely haven't heard anything from Tobias Lars and um, Jay Larson is supposed to be participating, but I do not see him around online. Um, I know his mother died recently, so he might be dealing with things with that. I don't know. Um, we'll see. So, um, okay. Yeah, so, well, well, that's, this is good. Um, so, uh, uh, well, one other thing. There you are. I've, I, I need I've to got you on the YouTube thing. channel. I need to mention one other thing. Um, as far as I could tell, um, Eli Sanford of Osprey Radio Networks does seem to be successfully connected in. So um, we should also be simul simulcasting on ospreynet.info, hopefully. Eli, are you here? I mean, it shows this little box in the Skype here, and it doesn't claim that he's trying to, you know, that it's trying to reconnect to it or anything and it's not giving yeah, that, me the, that the that errors. That good. Uh, um, yeah, excellent. Do you want to unmute your mic, Eli, and say hello? Eli just messaged me and he said, we're streaming. I'm working on the mic. Okay, so apparently the only technical oh, okay. well, there we go. Yeah. So, the uh, only, the uh, only technical uh, issue he's having right now is his ability to speak and he's working on that. And I'm hearing a little bit of feedback from from your end, because um, I know you, when my mic's know, open, yeah, yeah, because um, I know you said you're connected to the streaming video, um, so you know, make sure that you're only able to view that and you're not feeding that back into the connection. Um, the way I have established this um, this connection is very simple. I have. Um, two laptops connected together, you know, mic to speaker, speaker to mic. One um, laptop is um, hosting Skype and the other one is hosting Google Hangout. And um, I also um, did a quick um, a quick video uh, with Rich testing the call and I, I showed, you know, the physical hardware setup because I, I did that video using, you know, my flip video camera. Um, it wasn't like a, a live streaming thing or anything. So if you go to youtube.com forward slash PSEC documentary and then you click into the videos section like I'm doing right now, um, 
you'll see a video that says PSEC 2015 quick hardware tour um, Skype to Google Hangout connection and that is the quick little you know seven minute and 43 second video there that I physically show you know the the setup you get to see the two laptops you get to get to see where I'm sitting and, and what's going on and all that good stuff so um, yeah Okay, so, right, excellent. So, um, there we are. Uh, I'm just uh, stopping myself from burning my fingers <laughs> on the stove. That's good. Um, so, uh, all I see on your thing is you looking down so, uh, on, on the YouTube. Maybe I need to refresh that. Do, uh, is there a way of doing that? Um, just um, reload the video, I guess. It's like yeah. when, it, when any other YouTube video this is up. I'm hearing myself yeah. feed back into myself from your end, though. Yeah, when, when you talk to me and I'm speaking, um, it will feed back um, because of mm. Skype's lack of quieting at this point. Ah. Anyway, anyway, so uh, now we're here, what should we discuss? All righty. Well, what, it would what, be... you, what have you been up to, Dave? Uh, I, I've been up to uh, quite a bit of things. Um, Apparently, in improving my video skills is one of the things, as you commented to me on yesterday. Um, I would really love it if um, Katarina and Paul could uh, actually get in here. I'm going to ask them what their ETA. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, I yes, can. Eli. Where's right. Eli? Okay. We've got Eli on the line. Sweet. Dave, why don't you um, uh, contact Katerina and, and the other guys um, while uh, I introduce Eli and we have a little chat and you can mute and uh, get on with your stuff. I was okay. just about to suggest the same thing, so great minds think alike. Yes, well, telepathy works in these in these uh, internet situations. Eli, good afternoon. How are you? Whereabouts good are you, you mate? Good you, too. I, I'm from North Carolina. North Carolina, ah, lovely place. Is is that is it uh, is it uh, good weather there? Is it spring or is it still covered in thousands? Ah, uh, it's, it's nice snow? and warm here. It's like 60, 70 degrees. Oh, that's that's quite comfortable, quite mm -hmm. comfortable sort of thing. So, um, would you what? Um, what ah, so, uh, it says Rev here. Are you a minister of some kind? What's yeah. what, What's your story? What's 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 your uh your... Um, I, I've been I was ordained in two thousand and four. Um and I do more counseling than preaching, but yeah, it's legitimate and uh yeah. So, uh do you wanna tell us a little bit about yourself? Um what's uh, your uh what what was your uh, what what's your kind of uh, your topic as well? I mean what the what's the thing that kind of sparked you at the first place radio back in uh, back at the turn of the millennium um, kind of got me kind of got me going and I've been kind of been doing internet radio since then um, I run Osprey networks we're streaming out on that and uh, hopefully that's working I can't really see it and talk to <laughs> um, but yeah that's kind of what I've been doing for I don't know the last 10 years is internet radio Oh, that's lovely. And um, uh, and so, what kind of topics have been covered now? Uh, how do people get to your station? Um, OspreyNet.info would be the website. OspreyNet.info. S. That's Osprey with an E. O S P R E Y N E T. Yeah. Dot info. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, oh, sorry, okay. sorry to interrupt, but Richard Hamilton. Yes, he's descended. He's a he's a descendant of uh, Alexander Hamilton. Um, he's about to come in via the Google Hangout portion of it, but he's messaging me and saying, says I don't have access. Um, yes, you do. Um, <laughs> that's interesting. But yeah, trying to get, um... Rich uh, General Tate, as he is also known, he's not actually really a general. That's just his uh, name on Deviant Art, but he should be joining us momentarily. Um, so give us a okay. moment. Okay. And Dave, <laughs> your mic seems to have crept up again. Have you got automatic setting on it or something? 
That seems to be uh, no. just the once more. Yeah. No, there's no automatic settings or anything. I disabled that in Skype because the automatic um, volume adjust in Skype is a piece of shit. But uh, hold yeah, on, let me try to check this out with uh, Rich. Okay. So anyway, so uh, so Rev, what kind of uh, what kind of uh, stuff do you talk about on your show? On your um, we, we we talk about everything. You you name it. We talk about politics. We talk about um, everything from. You know, paranormal to uh, UFOs to uh, you know uh, what, what's anonymous doing these days. What's you know? I mean, you you name it, we talk about it. Um, ancient history. Hmm? <laughs> I, I, one of my one of my favorites is like pre-Lemurian history. Mm. Well, um, I'll have to uh, have history, you on you know. sometime. <laughs> but well, I mean, we, we've been doing some wide ranging, and the other the other thing is um, is the uh, is the uh, uh, continued existence of the Nazis that yeah, they never yeah. went away. So that's that's uh, something that I watch personally, and uh, we deal here on um, on Wolf Spirit with um, issues pertaining to uh, trauma based. Uh, uh, issues like uh, the psychological and the um, the government sponsored the uh, uh, so we're working towards solutions for people who have uh, experienced that and experienced trauma and finding out ways of of uh, defusing it yeah because yeah. it it puts the shock into the body anyway that's the that's part of all spirit um, and uh, we have. Uh, we have nice jingles and things like this, you know. Uh, that doesn't work. Uh, pressing F7 doesn't do that <laughs> on, on, on that browser. All right, let's see. Oh dear, Linux, wonderful. There we go. I think I can do this safely. Yeah, fascinating. You see. Um, so uh, let's <laughs> let's see if that blue Dave's headphones are. Uh, so uh, OspreyNet, um, have you uh, have you got a, a variety of uh, hosts on there? Yeah, we do. We have. Um, I do a show. I'm bringing back that I did like ten years ago, and everybody liked. Called um, Roundtable. We also have. Um, I'm gonna put um, um, Time Warrior. That's, that's what I call it. We've known him as Time Warrior forever. Um, I'm gonna put uh, some of his stuff up and. Uh, we kind of we kind of going through a rebuilding phase where you know we we did ten years of great radio and everybody kind of fell away and it kind of you know becomes stale and well it's time to time to start over and time to you know go back with new content and stuff and rebuild the rebuild the network. Okay, so you you must have many many archives. Oh yes, archive.org, and you just type in Osprey Networks. Tons of stuff will come up. Just have a. It's all Creative Commons. Anybody can air it. Anybody can do anything with any of the shows we've aired over the years. Well, so having spoken to all those people over all those years, you must have an idea of what's going on. What's your take on what's going on right now, given all of the radio shows of all the people that you've spoken to? Hmm. Sorry, to, sorry, 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 sorry to interrupt, oh, oh, guys. All right, here we go. I, I yeah, just go. wanted to, I just wanted to let you know that um, Richard Hamilton, aka General Tate, is here, and so we can do a full dem demonstration. Um, Mr. Tate, please open your mic and your video so that we can get the full multimedia, freaking experience, simulcasting everywhere, video, audio, everything. We're just going all over the place. It's crazy. Hello. <laughs> it's kind of crazy being on a uh, hangout and, from what I can tell, a radio show as well. That is pretty cool. First time for everything. We are, uh, you, so this is JP from uh, Wolf Spirit Radio, Ever Beyond Radio, Tiana Sal Radio, and uh, Scotty Sovereigns on the Land Radio. Um, we're, uh, so we're all from uh, the UK and uh, across uh, uh, to the Nevada and... Um, and uh, actually, we don't have anybody in. Oh, we still have Tremjar, I suppose. Anyway, um, uh, and uh, and uh, Indiana, we uh, we broadcast from as well uh, from our other studio here. Um, 
But uh, welcome, General Tate. But uh, before you before you continue, um, I, I just asked um, uh, uh, Reverend Eli. After all his experience, I did a long question, <laughs> so I don't want to waste that question. Um, I did a long question, and um, uh, Eli's probably had enough time to compose in his mind a sort of um, a kind of picture. Would you Would you like to draw the picture for us, Eli? Well, I've been doing this for about ten years, and in, in that ten years, things have really—I mean, they've they haven't really got any butter, you know. I mean, you scream into a microphone long enough, and you think maybe something will change, but it, it really hadn't. So, I mean, I guess that's kind of why I'm still out here doing this, you know? Trying to trying to make things better. I mean, the, the, the world picture hasn't really gotten any better. I mean, we're exactly where we were at in 2004. I mean, we're, we're still in a war. We're still, you know, fighting terrorists, supposedly. We're still, um, you know, we're, we're literally, it's 2004 again, I mean. I disagree. Well, listen, that's, that's an interesting concept, you know. Um, this is something I've also been um, <laughs> reading up about, is this uh, uh, spherical um, spiral um, repeating model of time, is that, you know, we're just repeating the same 10 years over and over and over again. Um, that sounds about right. Any 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 thoughts on that time, Warrior? I disagree. I have seen more awakening in in the masses in in the planet, in the people, since 2012. It than like ever. Like I've seen. I guess you could say that it's 20, 30 years worth of awakening just like crammed into a time compression of only a few years. Um, the reason that people like Eli are under the impression that, oh my god, nothing is changing, is because society, again, being run by Nazis, we literally have been raised to all be Nazis, think like Nazis, act like Nazis, feel like Nazis. There's that instant uh, gratification drive and that impatience drive. We think that, you know, if we don't plant a tree seed today, and have a 40-foot tree tomorrow, that, oh, everything's always going to be the same, doom and gloom, we can't do it, and oh my god, the world is ending, and I'm a failure, and da-da-da-da-da-da-da. That's a part of, whether you want to call them the Illuminati or the globalists or whatever, that's a part of their mechanism for keeping us enslaved. Because well, if we... I kind of disagree with you there. Well, I mean, you know, ten, ten years is an instant gratification, my friend. I mean, that's a long time, and I'm still out here doing it. I mean, I'm not saying that things can't change. I'm just saying that a lot of things have not changed. And people may be awakened, but if they don't do anything with that awakeness, what, what, what good is it? I agree with that, but there's also a lot of changes that have happened that you've really not been privy to. No one can can see absolutely everything that's going on everywhere in the world. And, you know, we each see different things based on what, what our experiences are. And another problem is, is when two different people have two completely different sets of experiences, the, both of those experiences are equally true and valid, but the two people will fight each other. I see it all the time in the, in the truth movement. Try to talk to anybody in the truth movement about anything. All they're concerned about is dick-wagging their egos and... and seeing who can proclaim themselves as the most right and self-righteous, they're not realizing that all these different participants in these debates have equally valid and equally true experiences, but each of them want to think, oh, only my experience is the only one true experience, and that's it. Nothing else is going on. So, yeah, there's a lot of really good, awesome, productive, powerful, awakening shit that a lot of people have seen, a lot of positive changes, and a lot of people have not seen because they weren't looking. You know, if a cat jumps off a table in a room that you're not in, it doesn't mean the cat didn't jump off the table in that room. It just means you weren't in that room to see it. It's a big planet. And nobody can know absolutely all of everything that's going on with all of everything. And that's another problem with people who are so 
dived into all all these dark and gloomy uh, conspiracy theory stuff is they have a belief system that says it's not possible for anything positive to happen. So if they have a belief system that says it's not possible, they're not looking for any of that. They don't. They they they, they think that looking for that is the equivalent of being told, oh, go across the rainbow bridge and consult the magical uniform about the cupcake of wisdom, and it just seems like total crap. So people who are caught in this misery paradigm. You know, it makes sense for them to not look for any of the positive because it's like being asked to believe in Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny or something. So I understand. But at the same time, that is also the same hubris that the Illuminati, the elites, the globalists, the corporatocracy, the corporate horrors, whatever you want to call them, have programmed into us since we were little kids to think that, well, okay, okay, if we experience okay, this one thing, that. that's the way okay, it is. I've been preaching the same thing for 10 years, man. I, I totally agree with you there. And you're using Schrodinger's cat against me here. But, you know, I, I, I think that we we really should be focused on, like, a single progressive movement forward. Do you see what I'm saying? Instead of everybody going off in their own ways, trying to do their own thing. Unfortunately, I again, I have to disagree. That's That's the programming. A single progressive movement that, again, the Nazis were a single progressive movement. Republicans are a single progressive movement. That It's these single progressive movements that get us into trouble. It's like it's corralling the cattle for slaughter. You know what I mean? We're trained to think. Look, if you don't change, if you don't adapt, you cannot grow. That is, that is true. But if you don't start on the individual separate level, then you can't you can't form into any groups. It's going to fail. We're, yeah. not taught, we're not taught in this society how to be individuals. I was not taught how to be an individual. In fact, I was taught by society that being an individual means you're bad and you're naughty and you're doing something wrong and you're going to get into trouble. Do not think for yourself. Do not question. Obey. Conform. That's what society taught me all my life. Hey, and I agree. The society is still teaching people that. And we need to step up and do something about it. Mm -hmm. But sitting here complaining about it isn't going to get it done. Exactly. So we have to learn to be individuals first because there's there's no way that individuals can come together in into a group when they don't know how to be individuals. It's like, like trying I, to have, I have a bunch of six I, I've been teaching people how to do that since, since 2004. Okay, I've been teaching people how to do that since 2004. And you know it because you were there. Yeah, but Eli... There's still a lot of paradigms you're stuck in that are stopping you. There's still a lot of paradigms I'm stuck in that are stopping me, too. And uh, we're all learning at our own pace. And one of the big problems so, is, is we think that it, you know we have X knowledge about this, 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 and this. And so we're thinking that, um, oh, well, we have that, so there's, there's no more to learn. I've got it all covered, so everybody has to follow me and do what I say. Otherwise, you know, they're a sheep, and they're not awake, and they're not enlightened. You know, and I had to get past that point of ego myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's, and, it's not about ego. It's just my point of view is is that there's not enough people today willing to actually stand up for their own rights and their own individualism to to change anything. Yes, it is building. I've been, yeah, I've, been, I've, been seeing, I've been I've been seeing a build up and it's you know, building fast. I, that's all I was saying is that it's faster than you Gentlemen. think Gentlemen. Or things like, you know. Gentlemen. Like. Gentlemen. Good afternoon. Oh, welcome to Over Beyond. Oh, something's something's ringing. Welcome yes. to Over Beyond. This is uh Ever hold be on, on, on Spirit on. Radio, um, and uh, hold on, hold on. we're having it's a simulcast. And, uh, there we go. Hold, hold on. Let me, yo, yo, yo. Let me, let me tell everybody who's online. Um, this is uh, Kristen Meyer, aka Thinking Kristen, on on YouTube or Chrissy Sparkle, I do believe is the forward slash. But hold yeah, Cr Kristen, welcome to. Google Hangout slash simulcast on Osprey Radio Network, simulcast, Wolf Spirit Radio, simulcast, a whole bunch of different shit at once. And where did Rich go? He was just here. Woohoo! Thanks for having me. Well, Sir, your, mother, we, we, your uh, mother had uh, you. I'm we're, just, we're just inviting you on the call. It was your mother who had you. So, uh, Kristen? <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Thanks for having Kristen, me hello? on the call. Kristen, hello. hello. This is JP. Um, I'm ah, the, uh, the host of this show that uh, 
um, is is the kind of core of this. Uh, it's lovely to have you on. Um, so you run a radio well, network. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and um, the kind of um, things you talk about, or, but uh, or a YouTube channel? Yes, um, I'm on YouTube. Uh, it's it's more the beginning stages of a YouTube channel, but I can tell you a little bit about you know what I've posted on so far. Um, Please, would you? I talked a lot about about um, self worth. Well, a more enjoyable life. Um, and I've been on Dave's show, Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy, a few times which is something I really always enjoy doing. It's a lot of fun. So, yeah, again, thanks for having me. I think this is a really cool thing that's going on today. Yes, indeed. Um, it's qu There's quite a chain, actually, I have to say. Um, uh, you know, on a, on a technical level, there's... Uh, there's at least hang on, one, two, three radio servers chained one to the other. Yeah. Um, and that's that's producing several radio streams that are very on, on various sites. Yeah. And, and then there's two more. Three, there, there, there's three computers just on my end, one hosting the Hangout, one hosting the Skype, those two linked. The third one is the one I'm going through. And then the Skype is con connecting in the Osprey Network simulcast as well as connecting in Kristen's call. And then through the Hangout, um, you know, Rich, a.k.a. General Tate, he's talking through the Hangout. I'm talking through the Hangout. You're all talking through Skype. It's, it's wow. It's, it's, I think this might be a first. <laughs> this is, um, this is for, for those of you who are into esoterics, this is a prime uh, example of the third ray expressing is the uh, ray of active intelligence. Being able to connect things together is an extremely third ray activity. Um, and, uh, Building new structures, that's seventh ray. So that's the way we relate to each other, uh, the seventh ray in, in terms of right relationship and uh, uh, gentleness and politeness and harmlessness and uh, uh, excellence and impeccability and all those lovely things um, are all the uh, domain of the seventh ray. So, uh, and that's how the seventh ray and the third ray cook. Uh, interact. It's your uh, sacral center and your throat center. Your sacral center is the seventh ray, and the throat center is the third ray. And the third ray is the uh, energy of of connection and um, bringing together of uh, different uh, thoughts and uh, active intelligence and uh, uh, computer networks and uh, logistics and uh, drivers and connections and then seventh ray and a partridge in a pear tree yes Dave <laughs> did, did you want to add something I said and a partridge in a pear tree <laughs> Lovely. Okay. Lovely. Anyway, so this is ever beyond, and uh, we always want to go further, you know, to take everybody one step further. Uh, that's why I thought I'd add that, since nobody else talks about it, and uh, that's that's the stuff that this show's all about. Anyway, um, so uh, Eli. Yeah. We had a we had a, you know did we did we finish our our little uh, our little topic there? About your, uh, your your experiences, or uh, uh, would you would you like to to add your side of, you know, how would this be relevant? To, relevant to what? I mean, relevant to. Well, here you are. You're saying you've done all this radio, and yet somehow you don't feel that it's done anything. Well, oh, I feel that that there it's done something. I just don't feel it's done enough. They would well, need to keep moving what's forward. What's enough? When is enough? And how do you know when enough is enough? That's a very, very important question. I, I don't think there will ever be enough. I mean, I don't think that uh, I, I don't think as human beings we will ever stop. Um, I mean, this is this is our legacy. This is, I mean, it may be digital works and just voices on tape, and you know, but I, I think that people can learn from that. I think people can learn from from the audio we do. And and it's like the modern book. So I don't think there will ever we ever will stop as a as a race of people. 
I don't think there will ever be enough. Just like there's always more awakening to be had, you know, there's always more information, deeper meaning that can be spread around. So I just think it's more, more and more opportunity to have really interesting conversations and to share a lot of awesome insight with people who really need to hear it. I, I agree. It's just, I love hearing about projects like this and stuff. You know, the radio stations, helping people out and stuff. Well, what it, what it reminds me of primarily, um, yeah, and there's a good old-fashioned quote from way, way back in the day with the space program, but um, one of the famous Apollo astronauts who stood on the moon and said, you know, there's a fundamental truth to our nature. Man must explore and, you know, it's exploring isn't just something you do physically. It's also a, a very mental thing, too. I mean, there's all kinds of different things, you know, different experiences, different ideas, different, you know. And when you open yourself up to that, it's really liberating in a sense. I mean, it's, it's literally like Star Trek. You're literally going where... Not, not too, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's, it, it's a pretty common thing, but, you know... In a metaphorical sense, you're going where no, where you haven't gone before. You know, you're going where no one has gone before. You know. I missed a little bit of what you said, just because I think there might be a little bit of a connection thing. But from what I heard, you know, I agree. So, to boldly split infinitives, indeed. Yeah. Uh, I'm st it's still, uh, um, on my end, the, uh, the video on the Google, on the YouTube uh, feed is, is slowing down and stopping. But, uh, you, know, uh, I, you know, I don't need to see this, and I haven't got enough bandwidth for all that, but it's great. Um, apparently, it's sounding very good. Um, so, uh, hello everybody. Uh, if I could wave my avatar, I could, but uh, it's just me looking to the left, isn't it? What, what do people see on YouTube, Dave, um, or, or on Google, or anything? Well, right now, um, who has the vacuum? Someone's got a freaking vacuum somewhere. You need to um, check your auto-adjust and uh, make it not auto-adjust. Hey um, JP, are you familiar yes, with yes. Running, are you familiar with running Windows Seven? Because um, Rich is having difficulty finding the setting to lower the microphone gain a little bit, and I'm over here running Linux, so for me it's easy. There's a nice little picture of a microphone, and I click on it, and there's an up and down slide bar, and it's 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 so easy a retarded monkey could do it. Um, okay. Um, let me. I'm not a retarded uh, monkey, but you know, an, an advanced monkey. Um, so, if you can hear me, Richard, uh, what you do is you will see if you move your mouse towards the pictures in the Windows. Sub Are you on Skype or on, on Google? He's on the Google Hangout. Um, hey, Rich, why don't you unmute so you can like have a direct conversation? I don't know. I don't know the Google Hangout. To turn oh, that, that, that doesn't matter. I'm talking, I'm talking about the operating system. You don't system need volume it. is available by right-clicking the speaker icon near the clock on the bottom right-hand corner and uh, setting adjust audio properties, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't use 7. Not very much. Um, that be any better? Uh, that sounds nice. All right. <laughs> oh, just, just right now there is audio. There is yeah. there is audio. You're you're clean. You're clear. You're not overdriven. You're not you're not uh, over compressed or anything like that. So it's lovely. Yeah, nice HD microphone helps. Um, yeah. Right click the speaker. Go to recording devices, and then it should give you a list of them. And then you can click and edit them and change the levels under there. Does that help? Uh, Rich, are you still there, man? Because I'm using one to stop it. Um, on the um, on the Google Hangout here, um, Rich's video seems to be frozen, and his mic is on mute. 
I don't know if he locked up and he's going to rejoin or if he's there or what the situation is. Rich just kind of seems to have disappeared into like a, a little abyss here for a moment. Yeah, so Dave, probably um, you could also turn your, your Skype input volume down by about a third. That would do. That would do. That would do both of you because it's it's the same feed. How's this? How's this? Oh, wow! wow. <laughs> no, you want to turn it down, not up. Down. I did turn it down. Hear you. you turn it right down. Turn I did it down, turn it down like half as much. Turn it way down. How's that? It's way down. A uh, little bit up now. Okay, how's that? That's good. Well, it was until we got all this background noise. <laughs> Um, how's that? That's no, the, the last one was good. This is now too loud again. How's that? Perfect. Perfect. Remember that. Don't let it adjust. Uncheck <laughs> auto adjust. <laughs> make it. Make uh, a auto note adjust. Of where that is. Is, That's auto really adjust good. is forever That's unchecked. I, I I don't use auto adjust. Um, Rich is. Oh, it's gone back up again. Yeah, well, it has. I, what the hell? I do not have auto adjust turned on, so I don't know Something what the hell. Something is auto adjusted because let you, me, you just come. Yeah. Okay, let me let me check my. So, no, the little thing that says allow Skype to automatically adjust my mixer levels that is unchecked. That is not totally not there. And remember, yeah. I'm I'm I, and I'm not talking well, through Skype Google anyway. I'm I'm talking through Go I'm talking through Google Hangout, so I'm not talking through Skype anyway. So that's why I was talking about adjusting the operating system mic settings and not... Because that's what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with the operating system settings. I'm not dealing with the settings on any particular program. I'm going straight to the OS. I'm adjusting the operating well, what, system What's directly. going on, Dave? Uh, you're getting louder and louder and more distorted and more distorted. <laughs> it's, it's quite in, 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 in something. In, yeah. in, in, some, some, in some way, it's like... That's the opposite of what we want. So it's a good lesson. Testing this one, is all lessons. One, you know, we don't. It's not a matter of pride, but um, testing one two three. 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 Testing one two and three. Testing. How are we? Okay. Well, if you can leave it there and save and apply and okay. Okay. Um, well, let's and, hope to God uh, we can do that. <laughs> now it's gone back. What the? Uh, no. Yeah, it did. What in the hell is bringing it back? That is weird because I lower it down, and then the ghost of Christmas past or something is bringing it up. I don't know what in the hell. You might have another program that is also monitoring the volume, and yeah, it shouldn't be able to adjust itself. Shouldn't this be. I cannot help you with. It's a uh, yeah, secret. I, I, obviously, there there is something like that going on, but there shouldn't be because I don't have anything like that installed to go on. Rich is going to rejoin us through Skype because he's having some weird difficulties with um, Google Plus right now for some reason. Maybe it's all the silver flares we're getting hit with. I don't know, but I'm pulling him in through Skype. Here he is. Good afternoon, Richard. Good afternoon. I'm still working on it, so I'm going to mute my microphone until, you know, I get it fixed. So I will be right. here in Thank theory. You. Okay, excellent. So um, while this? Dave is trying to uh, troubleshoot his um, his uh, one, stuff, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. why don't testing we talk one, about some good stuff? Testing, one, two, three? <laughs> like testing, testing, one, two, three. Apparently you can't hear me. Yeah. I'll maybe raise Yeah, we can hear you now. We hear you fine. Yes. Okay. Cool. Good. So, if it can stay um, there, that's um, great. Go ahead, Kristen. I just had a couple questions. I don't know where most of the people on this call are located right now. I can tell a couple of you have some accents, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know where JP or Eli live. All right. Well, JP, this is I. Uh, uh, I'm the ho host of uh, Wolf Spirit Radio and uh, Ever Beyond. Uh, this is the show that we're on, doing this experimental thingy. 
Um, I'm uh, English. I live in Scotland, and I'm broadcasting from London, Ireland, and Scotland, and Nevada. Awesome, awesome. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm Eli. I'm from North Carolina, and um, yeah, I run Entrepreneur Hours. Okay, oh. I am. Who hung her up? <laughs> 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 or was it something I said? <laughs> um, nobody I'm it's sure. not showing anything hanging up on my end who hung up no nope. all right uh, Kirsten uh, is just uh, okay now oh, it says yeah. she dropped um, I'm going to add her back in she's on a cell phone so it probably just messed up so I'm just going to pull her back in testing testing one two three Lovely. Perfect. We hear you. Trying to bring Kristen back. Well, there we go. Maybe, uh, hang on. It's, uh, maybe it's time for a tune. I want to uh, play a tune. This is called uh, Missing Time. and it's, it's the basis for one of our outlets in 432. It's called Missing Time. The mailbox belonging to Kristen is full and cannot accept new messages at this time. To leave a callback number, press 5, or please try again later. Goodbye. Welcome back to Ever Beyond on Wall Street Radio and dozens of other things. And, and we're tonight simulcasting with loads of other places um, on an experimental basis here by Time Warrior, Dave Kelso. And uh, we're joined by Kristen and um, General Tate. No, uh, Kristen, Kristen, uh, Kristen um, lost <laughs> signal and I couldn't get her back, so I don't know what happened. Or maybe her battery is flat. Well, she might maybe try to, to join in later. It was nice to have her. And uh, Eli Sanford, Reverend uh, of. Um, so yeah, we were just kind of <laughs> saying where we were and uh, what we were doing. So we might as well uh, continue that and um, you know just just kind of introduce ourselves. So um, 
Eli, were you halfway through the thing when everything went haywire? Um, what do you mean? Um... <laughs> Sorry, I got a little betrayed thought there. We, what were we talking about here? Well, we were just kind of... Um, Kirsten put a, a point across, and we were sort of uh, responding to that. If anybody remembers what was going on when everything... See, that's the thing. That's what happens with these Skype calls. Yeah, uh, I was jamming yeah, to the music. <laughs> Do you like that? Yeah, that was really good. Um, I, I yeah, had what, what, write... was that? what was that? Uh, that was called "Missing Time." Uh, is a track that I wrote last week. Um, uh, I I needed to make some tunes uh, to make some jingles for the station um, because we, you know, obviously nobody wants to get hit by the uh, the Roman Empire and so copyright <laughs> things and so I thought right well you know I'm a composer and a musician I can make my own stuff so uh, I just got some um, I just pulled a few tunes together uh, cool. I set them to 432 you should uh, um, you, uh, you should set up a, uh, a reverb nation account and uh, you know upload your stuff onto there I have um, I've got uh, a SoundCloud it's pretty oh, on SoundCloud. Yeah, so SoundCloud tends to be too limited, and if you want to pay for the extra add-ons, they charge ridiculous prices. Um, Reverb Nation, the the free account you can upload um, basically any file size up to eight megs is free, regardless of the length of it. And of course, if you have the pay account, um, you can upload up to a hundred megs, but um, they don't like cap you on length or any anything like that so I mean you know whatever you can fit into the allotted spot then you could put in there and they don't dick you around and you could upload as many files as you want so you know you could upload hundreds of files to Reverb Nation and they're not gonna you know be like no screw you um, whereas like SoundCloud you quickly hit this limit and they're like nope if you wanna go past this limit you gotta pay ungodly sums of money uh, <laughs> Well, I don't really mind having a limit because, like, enough's enough, like I was saying. That's one of the questions that I have. When is enough or what is enough? Now, this is uh, something uh, Eli was talking about. So, um, yeah, can I throw you that over to you, General Tate? What is enough? What, what is, you know, there's the, where I come from is that there's this, the, this old uh, thing in the Tao Te, Tao Te Ching that says, the man who knows when enough is enough will always have enough. So, what's your feeling about enough? Well, from being Amer being a you know, red-blooded Yankee Doodle American myself, you know, uh, come from the quote-unquote land of the free, home of the brave, quote-unquote, <laughs> you know, from the traditional sense. Um, to me. Yeah, land of the um, land of the land of the thief, home of the slave. Yeah, well, unfortunately, given the corporate status of what we are and what we have been for the last hundred and thirty years, yeah, unfortunately, we're no longer the noble experiment that the founding fathers set out to create. We're just a corporate oligarchy. Um, but anyway, to me. I mean, I kind of go back and look at history. I mean, you know, the American Revolution, for example, it took probably a good 25, 30 years before, you know, the colonists had been fed up enough with, you know, the British rule to finally do something about it. And it wasn't until, you know, to me it's like, you know, I don't think people are necessarily going to do anything until they've got nothing to lose, until their back is against the wall. And I don't... I don't mean that in a negative context. I mean, you know, I, I just I, I just think what's going to happen is people if people can find other alternatives to doing, you know, having to go to fists and to arms, if you will, people are going to do it. And the only time people are going to actually go, and especially knowing how the psychology of the average American is, if an average American can find alternatives to bloodshed, he will, you know. It's not. It's not like you know the the famous stereotype of an American being, uh, you know. Oh yeah, if you disagree with me, I'm gonna grab my gun and go go take care of you. You know, it's not that kind of thing. It's like if Americans can find alternatives and find other ways to, you know, be successful, they will. But 
if you back an American or any person for that matter up against the wall, you know, look out, you know, because now they've got no other option but to, you know, take back all the lost ground that they got taken from them. And I think that's what's going to happen in this country. People, you know, the politicians and the political elite are going to push so hard and so reverently that, you know, people are going to eventually kind of get shocked into awakening and realize, oh, crap, what just happened and, you know, realize, hey, we've got a problem. We need to deal with it and, you know, we need to start fresh. We need to start somewhere. And, you know, that's just kind of my perspective given the current stage of events. But, you know, people being people, you've got to be patient and you've got to realize, you know, people are going to be people and people have got their processes that they've got to go through. And, you know, it's not going to be an overnight thing. You know, the American Revolution wasn't an overnight thing. No revolution is an overnight thing. It just doesn't, it doesn't happen that way. It's not like in the movies where, you know, it's, you know, it happens. It, it, things like that just don't happen, you know at least not in the current state of society and the current way of things, you know, it's just, it's just going to, it's just going to take more time, you know, for people to realize the full extent of what's going on because there's still a lot of disillusion and still a lot of lack of awareness on the part of average Americans and a lot of people around the globe. I mean, you know, but as Dave or Time Warrior has said multiple times, you know, the awakening process is a process and it's something that needs to be respected and it's something that needs to, that everybody goes at at their own pace. And, you know, people will awaken in time. It's just, you know, to what extent and how that has yet to be seen. But, you know, I'm just I'm just looking at it from a sense of patience. I've got hope for humanity. I'm not all doom and gloom. Oh, all is all is lost. I mean, you know, it's just you know, things are going to get ugly for a while. You know, things are going to be ugly. You know, the globalists are showing their their true colors. They're showing what they are and what they always have been. They're not. You know, it's it's just part of it's just part of the global chess game, if you will. You know, and you just got you just got to learn to be patient and you know, outsmart them. And they're already starting to show their slip ups and errors because they're losing patience. And you've and it's just kind of playing the game of, you know, who blinks first. Well the good news is is I think the globalists are beginning to blink and they just haven't gotten the slightest sense to realize that they're blinking. And, you know, I think overall it's just going to be spreading the truth and being patient and you know, using discernment and awareness and knowing where to strike and what to do that will win the day in the end, you know. And that's that's my personal view. I've always felt that the uh it's it's very difficult to force somebody to wake up. It's uh it's like trying to get a flower to a bud. You can't make it do it any faster, can you? There's nothing you can do. You just have to wait. It's like trying to, to give try, it's it's like like trying to give a cat a bath. Yeah, or anything. Yeah, cats are perfect examples of, of, of that's exactly how humans are well, on, well, the, you, on you, the inside. You can't force it, but you can you can you know tin the soil and add the fertilizer and you know and have high hopes for that bud to come out. You know what I've you noticed know, that the best way of doing that is inspiring people instead of forcing. Because you got to realize that because we've all been indoctrinated, you know, people have a set of belief system that, that says, okay, here's the parameters for what reality absolutely has to be, and it can't be anything else. Nothing else exists outside of that. So if you're operating with outside of their parameters, then they're looking at you like, like you're the pink elephant flying down the street that's not supposed to exist, and their belief systems say, no, that can't be, but their logical mind knows that they're looking at it and they're seeing it. So it sends them into a state of cognitive dissonance, and that state is like they, they're at a choice point. They can either be inspired and ask questions and be like, wow, why is that happening? I need to explore this. Or they can get terrified and run like hell. So when we realize this, then we know that 
when people react negatively to us operating outside of the parameters, it's not a bad thing. They're just in shock. Let them, let them go on their merry way if they want to go. Don't try to force them and go, oh, you're an asleep sheep and you need to, to drag into our way. And come on, man. What's wrong with you? Wake up. Just just let them go. As a matter of fact, your respect for, for their belief systems and their right to have it will blow their mind more than anything because they have a belief system that says no one can respect their belief systems Everybody has to be adversarial. No one can be nice. They, they have this belief system. So as soon as you try to be nice, they automatically think you're up to something. Oh, they must be pulling a scam. So then they try to hit you hard to call your bluff. But no matter how, how much you hit a tree, it doesn't cease to be a tree. You're not going to hit a tree enough times that it magically changes into an elephant simply just maybe because you believe it should be an elephant. No, it's not going to do that. So if you're genuine and you have integrity and you're truly being yourself to, to the fullest, and you're not, you know, playing an act, like, be different like everybody else, haha. Ha, you know, you're literally genuinely being who you are, then no matter how much anybody tries to hit you, you're not going to change into something else, because you're not bluffing in the first place, and eventually they'll wear themselves out like the 800-pound the, the fat guy trying to run down the block, and they'll have to stop and think, and then they have a choice to make. Either they can then start to ask questions and go, why is this happening? Or they can just, you know, go into fear and be like, screw that, I'm not going to deal with that. And they walk away and they look away and they stick their head in the sand. And okay, fine, that's, that's their right to do that. And when you can respect that, that's how you inspire people to change. But if you're like, no, no, you have to think like me, the new world order is here and you got to fear the new world order and wake up and come on, you stupid sheep. If you're just ranting and raving like that at everybody, then, you know, people are going to turn you off. And that's one, one hard lesson Alex Jones has had to learn. He's noticed he's He's gotten more listeners since he's calmed down a bit more, and he realized that all the fear stuff is just playing into the hands of the globalists. I'm not saying he's a calm person by any means, but he's calmed down a lot more than he was because he got a kick to the ego like, oh, wait a minute. I'm actually doing what the globalists want by getting all fear porny, so maybe I should like chill, and then more people will be receptive. And that's what that's what's happened. He hasn't gotten it perfect yet. He still can be an uppity little bitch at times, but he's a lot more chill than he was, say, five years ago, ten years ago. So, yeah, inspire people. That's that's how to wake them up. But there's no guarantee, and you have to respect free will choice. Inspire people by being you and respect their free will choice to either accept or reject the inspiration. Red pill, blue pill. It's up to them. As Dave's voice reverberates around the inside of our skulls, <laughs> it's funny you just got louder. Yeah, anyway, I'm not I'm not going to bitch about the uh, the audio anymore, but um, it's it's just uh, maybe next time. Um, I'm going to play a tune. I I did a, a another thing the other day, um, uh, and this was a poem. Somebody published a poem by uh, Edgar Allan Poe, so it was a real Poe poem. Oh, that was my stuff, anyway. Um, and uh, I thought, uh, that's very pretty. So uh, I read that. Um, and uh, I played a little bit of guitar behind it. So I'm just transferring it across right now. Um, you are listening to a multicast, a multimedia multicast here based on Wolf Spirit Radio. And TNSR, Ever Beyond, Scottish Sovereigns, uh, Osprey Net, uh, Google Plus, Paradigm uh, Shift and Comedy, 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 everything, yeah. Everything, yeah. Indeed. So, where is it? It's under D. D, 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 Dream Within Dream. There we go. This is called Dream Within Dream. So it's, it's a poem read over a little tune. There we go. <laughs> Take this kiss upon the brow, and in parting from you now, thus much let me avow. You are not wrong who deem that my days have been a dream. Yet if hope has flown away in a night or in a day, in a vision or in none, is it therefore the less gone? 
All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. I stand amid the roar of a surf-tormented shore, and I hold within my hand grains of the golden sand. How few, yet how they creep through my fingers to the deep, while I weep, while I weep. O oh God, can I not grasp them with a tighter clasp? O oh God, can I save one from a pitiless wave? Is all that we see or seem but a dream within a dream? Within a dream. <laughs> Welcome back. Little break there. Drift away on a dream. A different thing. I keep doing these things. Anyway, so uh, where were we? Enough is enough. Was enough enough? Hmm. <laughs> Harumph. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, which yeah. So basically, you know, what about you know? Here's the here's the thing. We we we've, we've all been doing this. How much feedback do you get? I'm I'm actually quite pleased with the feedback that I'm getting now. It's a nice steady trickle. It's not too much of a flow. I'm not getting loads of emails, so that means I can answer things, or not, yeah. as the case may be. Um, yeah, same here. Same here. Same here. I don't do yeah, email very much. I'm hearing myself echo, but I don't. I don't do email very much. I hate email, but I get all sorts of you know feedback on uh, on YouTube and Facebook and you know instant messaging and all sorts of different stuff. So yeah, I get it that way, and you know it's it's a little here and a little there, and enough to know that I'm doing a good job, but it's not like this ginormous overflow mega flood of you know, comments to where I, I feel that I'm just buried under them. <laughs> well, Dave, it would be very difficult for you to deal with more the more uh, comments than you do do get because you um you answer in full, let's put it that way. Very true. Yeah. I I get you know, I get a lot of stuff on social media. It's not a lot, but you know, it, it it lets you know that what you're doing means something to somebody, you know? Do you know, I, I, tell, I, I want to tell you this story because this is something that, that really did work. Um, and uh, I did a reading for somebody on, on uh, one of my free readings on the shows. And uh, I said to her, hey, you've got a real talent for using crystals and stuff. Uh, have you ever thought about using organite? I said, Google Organite, O-R-G-O-N-I-T. And um, <laughs> one year later, in the post, I get this box. And in it is the most amazing Organite pyramid, the most beautiful thing, full of jewels and, and sparkles and silver and gold things and, you know, just the most <laughs> incredible thing from this listener who uh, I said, uh, I recommended her. She's, you know, she's gone into business doing this stuff. It's just beautiful. That was that's one of the, the you know, that's that really told told me that something's landed, you know. Yeah, I do love it when people send me pyramids. Um, Rob Potter sent me a pyramid for uh, doing Cobra's uh, voice. You know Cobra, uh, this guy. I do his voice for a lot of the interviews because I've got the equipment that can do the uh, the voice changing. And um, and so uh, as as a gift for uh, for doing um, some private stuff for him, uh, he sent me a, a pyramid. So if anybody and and yeah, uh, people do send me pyramids. If you want to send me a pyramid, I um, I love pyramids. Anything pyramidical. Uh, the more cheops, the better. But uh, I don't mind a anything. Did you know that early Gillette razors were actually supplied with a pyramid? And um, they really did work, and they stopped doing it because nobody bought the razors anymore. But anyway, thus the beginning of built-in obsolescence. Meanwhile, how's <laughs> Harumph, <laughs> General Taser? <laughs> Somebody, 
engage with me. Engage. Number one. Um, no, I didn't know about that about the razors. Um, that's that's interesting. So that's that's a kind of very um, uh, visceral form of feedback. Um, that that really has started to work for me. Um, I'm chatting with Kristen. I'm chatting with Kristen. Are you? That's very nice. Is is she? Does she have any messages? Ask her if there are any, any messages she wishes to give out, or if we can call her on any other mains, on any other device. Um, um, is she, she near a device? She's got. She's, she's got. got device. She's got. Address the device according to its IP number. Would you like to know what happened to her? What happened, Dave? Well, she got distracted by, let's just say, some quote-unquote real-life, personal, physical reality things that she needs to go contend with at the moment, and she doesn't know if she can make it back this time around, but if she can, she will. Well, thank her for her input so far. And, and um, she has a question. Later, but she has a question. She says, how much longer do you think it will be? So how much time do I have left here? We have... Uh, 42 minutes. So, 42 minutes of... JP says 42 minutes. Yes, I do. There, you don't have to re read that out. <laughs> you, you, you had a, a, a very um, creepy moment there, just then. Really? How so? Yeah. Um... Yeah, you, you sounded like the, the computer Hal talking to Dave. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave, but I'm afraid I can't do that. Yeah. Oh, oh exactly. you want something better? Hold on. Here's one. How about we have oh, uh, oh, Bill, Bill Clinton? <laughs> hold on. We got to do this. We got to have Bill Clinton explain how his relations with Monica Lewinsky is helped with the New World Order. Bill Clinton, are you here? I'm here, Dave. Hello, everybody. How you doing this evening? <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> and then somebody plays the sp <laughs> the Spock. Fascinating. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> So, Mr. So Mr. Clinton, um, how how much how much butthurt is the NWO going through over this awakening process? Please describe the butthurt for us, Mr. Clinton. Well, Kissinger's been turning my butt into red cauterized buttermilk. I've been taking it out on Monica by slapping her in the Oval Office and hanging Obama from a tree and beating him with a baton. I'm really not having a good time right now. It's getting much worse. I don't think Clinton can. I don't think Mrs. Clinton can stare to look at me right now. So uh, yeah. did, did did Hillary finally uh, get the surgery to have her dong removed, or or how's that going? She got it made bigger. <laughs> Actually, talking about um, presidents and their, uh, their um, uh, gender status, what, what's your take on Michael uh, LaVaughn Robinson stroke Michelle Obama concept as, as espoused by Joan Rivers two weeks, two weeks before she died? I like me a little bit of black man. <laughs> I can't even say that straight. God. Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> he likes him some get 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 Hillary and Michael Obama and you know, whatever, little Cola Powell, whatever he got yourself an Oreo cookie there. <laughs> yeah, it's very it's been very strange in the White House, isn't it? You know, you've got Hillary and um and uh, Michael. I mean, Obama even <laughs> says Michael and I. You know. Ugh, I, I haven't heard that. Um, it was a few years ago, and it was some <laughs> sort of naval thing. And he said, "Yeah, her and Michael and I." Are the, the, you know, he. The, we had uh, um, on Strange Universe. We had um, uh, uh, what's her name? Um, 
oh god, she was on Friday anyway. She was an old friend of Obama's, and um, he's a, a crack smoking uh, pothead. Uh, he was always on the belt, on, always on the borrow. Um, uh, it was always us, uh, you know. And if anybody gave, if anybody gave him a joint, um, he would just smoke the entire thing. He would just go, you know, and just smoke it completely. Um, and um, uh, yeah, he was. He's not really a presidential material, to be honest. Well, but, I mean, uh, how many of them actually are? They're scumbag material. Uh, too bad we don't have uh, Paul Pelletier here. He he probably could have done a good impression of the uh, North Korean uh, president, and we could add a thing with the North Korean president and Bill Clinton, or you know, having an argument or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have a question. Uh, what's what is Darth Vader's opinion on things that are going on? Uh, Darth Vader, are you here? I don't think Darth Vader made it just yet. Oh, you're not. Your voice isn't up to that impression. <clears throat> well, I just don't know how it would sound over the radio. I mean, I know it works between. I don't know. I just don't know if it would scramble or what it would do. I think it would be fine. Okay, I'm going to test this. See if it works. This is uh, Vega. Did that work? So far, it was a little, a little, a little, a little garble, but it worked. It could be clearer. Mm. Yeah. Might Maybe. need to work on that one. Well, we already heard from <laughs> yeah. Spock, so how about uh, if Mr. Sulu could join us? My name is George Decay. Hikaru Sulu reporting. Hello. Oh my. Oh my. Shields, shields. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God. Love those voice impressions. <laughs> Hey, Boo Boo, that's a funny looking ranger with the pointed ears, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a blue shirt. <laughs> so, in terms of um, leading edge, cutting edge <laughs> consciousness, <laughs> paradigm shifting. Cut um, the blue dress. <laughs> Hello, uh, Kermit the Frog here. That was not me this time. <laughs> this is Paradigm Shift in Educational Comedy, the lighter side of genocide. Hey, ho, this is Kermit the Frog's clone speaking with Kermit the Frog. We've been cloned, just like Obama. <laughs> <laughs> But hurt, I feel in you. A cup <laughs> I do not give. Yogi, that sounds like Yoda. Hey, Mr. Yoda, sir. Uh, you know you want to stick your lightsaber in the bear, hey? Okay, for those of you who don't really know what's going on, <laughs> if, uh, if I may fill everybody in, um, uh, <laughs> Ever Beyond on Wall Spirit Radio uh, tonight is joined by a um, uh, a a chain of connections uh, that seem to be going through Dave Kelso, otherwise known as Time Warrior, um, uh, or Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. He's always posting things on my page. You can he's the the one all the big pictures. Anyway, so that's uh, and so um, uh, this is what him and his crew get up to. During nights or days, do you, what else do you do, guys? Do you do um, do you do jokes? No, better not do jokes. That could get bad. Uh, we've done uh, we've done quite a bit. Quite a bit. Um, how about 
<laughs> subject of gender equality and empowerment. Hang on, let's just put gender equality and empower and empowerment. Oh. oh, but we don't have Katarina oh, here to speak, speak on that. Well, let's let's you know let's hear from a male's perspective. How do you how <laughs> how do you see equality? Oh, I've ranted on and on and on and on about that stuff before. I mean, I think well, humans you, are. You I think, think you humans could are. It. I think humans are humans, and I think that emotions are human, and that gender issues are just another like divide and conquer tactic that the media uses. You know. Uh, they'll they'll pit people against each other with gender, race, religion, politics, any anything they could they could think of to divide and distract. And um, you know, I think we need to be coming together, like not in that new world order sort of way, and not in that fake Nazi utopia, everybody holding hands around the bonfire sort of way, but just you know, with the respect. For you know, for diversity, that um, you know, not everybody's gonna agree, <clears throat> not everybody's gonna get along, but that doesn't mean we all gotta like kill each other and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's the same whether you're talking about males and females, blacks and whites, Democrats and Republicans, whatever. It's you know, we're all human. We all have human emotions. We all have similarities. We all have differences, and you know, if we can learn to respect that. Then you know if someone hates someone else or doesn't like someone else or whatever, then it doesn't have to lead to like bloodshed and crime and war and genocide and all this other stupid and subjugation and harassment and all the stupidity that we have to deal with. It doesn't have to go there. I agree with you. No, I I just think we should. You know, just go ahead and make it all legal and, and step away from a minute and, you know, just calm down. I mean, you know, people are just people, you know? It doesn't matter what, you know, if they're like, you know, it, it doesn't matter who they like. It's just people, you know? Just ex everybody should accept everybody. It doesn't matter. Well, I think everybody uh, should accept well, everybody's person. equal rights. Like, you have the right to dislike somebody. doesn't mean, you know, that you have to, like, beat each other over the heads with clubs like cavemen. <laughs> you, you can just avoid each other and go work with the people you do like and not go harass the people you don't. You know, you don't have to be all William Black about it. <laughs> General Tate, equality. Well, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much, you know, you got to respect everybody's right to, you know, associate with who they want to associate with and disassociate with who they want to disassociate with and you know equality is a, really a mind state I mean you know it, just not looking down on anybody with a sense of superiority I mean we all have our strengths and our weaknesses and we're all capable of certain some of us are capable of being good mechanics some of us are great philosophers some of us are great math and my personal view on it is we just need to respect each other for the skills that we do have and that we can build upon and, you know, support each other in our weaknesses, you know. And that is the only way that the human race is going to really prosper in an intergalactic sense is when we can all, I mean, unite together on common interests. I mean, we don't have to necessarily get along with each other. I mean, there's obviously still going to be social groups and, you know, cliques, and there's going to be, you know, there's going to be birds of a feather flocking together. But, I mean, at least people, when people mature to that point of mind state, you know, people will be able to at least realize, hey, you know, we may be, we may have differences in opinion or differences in cultural taste or whatever, but we're still human and we can still help each other and benefit each other at the same time and still, you know, coexist as a society, you know, and that's how humanity will prosper because in the current state of things, you know, 
the reason why there's such a lack of equality is because everybody's too busy trying to, you know, force their will on each other and saying, you know, you have to conform to my lifestyle. No, you have to conform to my lifestyle. I'm superior to you. No, I'm superior to you. It's just this, you know, <clears throat> nation states dick wagging contest. I mean, what was the, the Cold War? It was just a, it was a military industrial complex, you know, dick wagging contest. You know, who could build more ICBMs? Who could do what in space? Who could do, you know, this and that? Sure, it gave us a lot of technological advancements. Sure, it gave us the internet. Sure, it gave us a lot of wonderful things. I'm not bashing it. It happened. We can't change what already happened. But, you know, until we can realize, hey, you know, we're all human. We all have, you know, our differences and, you know, our similarities. We just need to respect, you know, our similarities and our differences and just learn how to work around those things. And, you know, that's when society will become, you know, a coexisting society. And I think in the current scheme of things, we're headed there. It's just, it's a long process, you know. And that's pretty much my my take on it. You see, it's a very interesting thing that it all everything, as we know, starts from thought, and thought creates our speech and our actions. And so, equality has to exist within our thought. We are now, I mean, we, the, we you know. <laughs> some people are starting to recognize that it's even within the language that we use that is violent or not violent, that is harmless or harmful. Um, so I think sometimes it's, it's a good way to, uh, you know, how we, how we can change others is like David was saying, you know, we model it, we uh, uh, express it. True. Sure. As sure. an, an example of, and it's uh, the the idea they call it a non-violent communication, and yeah. uh, it's a yeah. very interesting. And it's essentially, it's essentially, it's a way, it's it's a step towards, in a way that you know, I don't know, <coughs> it's a step towards uh, a way of uh, relating to each other in a in a, in a non-violent way of thinking and a non-violent way of uh, being, you know, so that we start peace instead you know, of starting war and so we open our mouths. You reminded me of something. <clears throat> People oh. um, have a hard time getting, you know, their minds around things like, you know, thoughts, emotions, and belief systems and all that, literally um, creating physical reality. Well, here's a... a a very simple way to understand it that I think most people could wrap their minds around. Um, what came first, the jet plane or the idea that something like that might be able to exist? I mean, we didn't go searching through the forest and find these jet plane trees and, you know, picking jet planes off the tree and, you know, here and now we have jet planes. No, that had to start in the non-physical, in the realms of of imagination in the realms of emotion and belief and thought it had to start there so thought does create reality without human thought everything we know of that's human wouldn't be here <laughs> at all all the things we take for granted would not be here and you know so that's one way people can can look at it as far as people who have a hard time thinking, oh, well, it doesn't matter what you think and feel and, and this and that and believe, because that has nothing to do with physical reality. Oh, it's created physical reality. You would not have computers or internet radio or jet planes or rocket ships or satellites or cars or boats or anything without thought creating reality. Sorry, wouldn't have it. Well, exactly. And so the, the quality of reality that we create is an entirely direct reference to our quality of thought that creates our actions and our speech as we vibrate our way through the world. You agree? Yep. So if our if we want to create a world of dominion, we have to act in a dominion manner. I we have to uh, embody the principles 
uh, which we which we believe in. You know that things should be fair and the uh, da, da 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 da. So this this is this is what I'm, I mean. These are these are the questions that I'm you know that are coming up in my mind. But if uh, we're gonna create a world of of dominion, let's let's keep the gem hadar home. Okay, no gem hadar. Thank you. <laughs> For those who do not know, a gem hadar is a tiny little uh, poisoned pen, a uh, fingertip uh, thimble type thing for uh, injecting poison into the neck of the uh, um, unsuspecting victim who crosses the <laughs> Bene Gesserit. Is that about I, right? And I was actually making a reference to Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Rich got the joke. Yeah, I, I got it too. I, oh, I knew your yeah. reference, but I also knew from Star Trek. Or you can yeah. think of you can think of the first episode of um, Star Trek Enterprise where they where Q introduces himself and it shows him like a soldier and he's all pasty white in the face and he's got these injector things going into his neck and he's basically that, that a wasn't, soldier. From, that was an Enterprise. That was Next Generation. Or next next generation, next generation. My bad. I'm thinking of the Enterprise D already. I'm just thinking of, you know, the USS Enterprise. Next generation. Yes. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, 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 you're listening to Sean David Martin. Sorry about that. I missed that. <laughs> Wrong button. Oh, fascinating. <laughs> Love that. But, yeah, you know. Meanwhile... Meanwhile, back on the Excelsior, Mr. Sulu is, uh... As I was saying, sir. Yeah, as I was saying, you know, Q's standing there, you know, he's got, like, all this stuff hanging off of him, and you can see all the, you know, I think one of them, he gets injured, and he falls over, and then he hits a button on his wrist, and then the drugs go into his veins, and he pops back upright, you know. It's basically, Jim Hadar are basically alien versions of drugged up super soldiers. That's essentially what they are. Star Trek did a lot of whistleblowing. I also find it interesting the idea of of Khan, you know, like the Wrath of Khan. He was supposed to be a genetically modified, you know, freaking leader in the late 1990s and of course this theme you know, has you know was originating in the 1960s with Gene Roddenberry, and Roddenberry was an insider. So to me, this directly relates to MK Ultra, super soldiers, um, military contractors, the military-industrial complex. And of course, you know, at first it didn't make sense when watching the show, but now looking back in hindsight, it's like, oh well, he was an insider. So obviously, in a world of Star Trek. You know, things like the Illuminati, the New World Order, and all their plans would be public knowledge because they're, like, well past that, you know. That was 20th, 21st century stuff. That would be history. But for the people in the 20th and 21st century actually watching Star Trek, it's just fiction. But Roddenberry was an insider, so he, he always leaked things out through Star Trek. I always love that. You know, when we uh, when we started to uh, find out these... Uh, these black projects and stuff like that. And it turns out, you know, the Marvel comics, these were a genetic experiments that they've been doing since the 1930s. Um, all the, you know, all these superheroes, these are people. <laughs> these are real people. And stuff happens to them. And, you know, so the comic writers get their ideas and uh, who knows? <laughs> the comic writers might indeed be these super soldiers who've got these... Uh, other lives, because what we are, the other thing we find out about super soldiers is that they're they're like ordinary people who get turned on, they're switched on, right? And they also have access to time travel technology, which just makes things very very weird. And of then, course, the di the difference then, being is that in the Marvel comic world, superheroes are public knowledge, but in the real world, it's all kept hushy hushy. That's right, because, the well, in the Marvel comic world, or in all these other alternate universes, um, every, it's like everybody knows, it's like a joke. Everybody knows that, you know, everything's going on. Everybody knows in the outside, looking into this kind of goldfish bowl that we call the world. Um, and the goldfish bowl is filled with all these lies, and we're swimming around in all these lies. Uh, and outside, everybody can breathe fresh air. Um, hey JP, and, uh, 
Have you ever watched Marvel Comics' new series, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Uh, I have not. I love that thing. I mean, they uh, they totally reference in things like 9/11 and WikiLeaks and you know all the all the conspiracy theory stuff in into their show. So it's like, even though yeah, in their little universe, it's public knowledge that you know people like Captain America and Hydra and this and that and all that exists. At the same time, there's still a lot of things that are kept secret. So in that universe, you have WikiLeaks that is there leaking information. You still have all of the same sort of freedom movements and things that you have in our current timeline. It's just on a bit of a different parallel to where the public in that universe is more informed than the public of our universe. But you still have all this stuff. So I kind of thought that was neat. So, um, that film, Galaxy Quest, with uh, Alan Rickman playing uh, Spock, um, turns out to be funny because um, the, there are races out there who watch these things. And, you know, because there's a joke within a joke within a joke because, like, people think that, you know, ha ha, they're aliens saying these are historical documents. And they're, they're recordings of Star Trek that were broadcast and received by these people. And they built the ships to the specification, and but they didn't know how to fly them. They didn't have the, you know, didn't have the, the crew, the, the ability of the crew. So uh, they, again, there's the, disclosure the... going on in all of, the, all of the, almost every science fiction film <laughs> is telling some kind of truth. And it just gets funnier and funnier and funnier because, you know, <laughs> As you as uh, you know, you meet more and more people who have been involved on the inside, that they have been watching these things. Um, I had yeah. Simon Parks on my show last week, and he was he was actually um, now. Uh, have you guys heard? Now this is a, a very British thing, but there was a British version of Gene Roddenberry. His name was Jerry Anderson, and he made a. A series called Thunderbirds, which is probably the most famous one. I have, anybody I, heard of I that? Have, I, I have on oh. VHS a very rare to find Thunderbirds 2086 um, recorded off of TV. I mean, I've, I've looked to see if that's on DVD and stuff, and it's nowhere. All the other Thunderbird stuff is out there, but Thunderbirds 2086 seems to be a rare find, and I've got it on VHS. Very good, Dave. Maybe you could share it on re YouTube. Yeah, I could. I could try. I gotta find it and get it off the tape and whatever. That would be it's... lovely. Anyway, um, so uh, what we find <laughs> is that there was there was a show uh, called Stingray, and in Stingray, there is a mermaid, a literal female who can swim, you know, through water and, and things like that. You know, she has the and they have they have the harp thing. You know, which one's the harp? Which, is this the, yeah, yeah. So, you know, this is very un, there's the underwater. You know, so there, there's this lady. You know, so, Maria, Aqua Maria. Yeah, it's all very lovely. Um, um, and uh, he was made by the government. <laughs> His mother uh, worked for MI5 and the NSA, and uh, she made him. Sit down in front of these uh, these shows that were essentially puppet shows, but they disclosed so much. And I, I knew it was um, Fireball X. Do, do you remember Team America? You you saw the film Team America, yeah? No, I, I I haven't, but I've heard of it. All right. Well, it's using this. It's called Super Marionation. It's uh, you know very high uh, high tech marionettes, and. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's what you know. That's what Thunderbirds is. But um, they had this other show which was called Joe Ninety, in which a nine-year-old boy, blonde haired green eyes, was um, uh, basically his mind was injected with a program, and uh, he could become anything. And he could become a pilot or an assassin or this or that. And uh, uh, he was sent on these missions, and because he was a nine-year-old boy, nobody suspected him. Everybody go, ha, 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 a nine-year-old boy? Yes, of course you are, yes. Um, of course you are an evil villain. No, no. But anyway, um, 
<coughs> this is a, a, a pure example of Montauk because they were using young boys uh, to program their minds. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. So I would recommend Joe 90 if you ever get the chance to have a look um, because, uh, you know, a few shows of that and you think, aha, if this is a puppet show about a reality, you know, and these must have been really expensive to make in those days. You know, they're very high quality um, uh, toys things, you know. <laughs> anyway. You know what I like? I, I don't know if you're aware, but there's a, there's a, a lot of um, whistleblowing um, TV series and movies that have been coming out. I mean, I know you're obviously aware of Fringe. They did a lot of whistleblowing stuff in Babylon 5 and things like that, but um, there's a new series called The 100. Have you ever watched that? No, but that oh, sounds like a good one to, to watch. I just good. want to catch up on Fringe, Dave. Um, one of the, uh, one of the interesting things in, in Fringe that the, um, I'm sure you caught was the the name Bishop. Do you remember that the little scene where he talked yeah. about how the name used to be Bischoff, but it was changed to Bishop? Yeah, the whole the whole Nazi things. They, they were talking about Operation Paperclip. Bingo! Yeah. Exactly. I love that. So. What Fringe was about was not about one person, but it was about the whole project. I mean, essentially, that's... But the the interesting thing is that the other world is essentially the world where the Nazis won. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah essentially. Yeah, wasn't, there, wasn't there a movie like that? <coughs> wasn't there a movie like that where, where the there was, Nazis There was a won. Star Trek, wasn't there? Wasn't there yeah. an Earth... Yeah, there, there was an Earth... Yeah. Trek. Yeah, th there was a few of uh, there, they did a few Nazi themes in a bunch of different yeah. Star Treks. Uh, and there was another one. There was a Roman Empire was still running. <laughs> I think that was it. You know, it was still there was still a Caesar, and it was just like Roman. You know, like no different. <laughs> you know, just like exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, it's like lovely. it's like it's like alluding to to the fact that you know. In our universe, the Nazis have won. The only difference is, is that we're not allowed to know that. <laughs> you know, the Nazis are running yeah. everything. Well, it's the, we're in the, the pre-exposure, you see. The mm. thing is, you can't see them until you, they've exposed themselves. So they haven't really quite exposed themselves yet. <clears throat> uh, that's what really the event is, I think. Uh, but it's, we're going to see like the, yeah. the old John Carpenter movie, um, They Live. Basically, they're yeah, everywhere. Yeah, John Carpenter, They Live. I, I love that. I love that movie. Um, just like, you know, you got the you got the Statue of Liberty up there holding the torch, and people don't know what it is. They don't realize it's the, the goddess Samiramis, otherwise also known as another alias as um, Moloch, who is um, holding up the torch of illumination right at the port. Basically saying, you know, you, you think this is the land of the free and the home of the brave, but it's really the land of the thief and the home of the slave, and we're telling you, we're admitting it to you in the symbolism, but you don't see it. We're hiding it in plain sight. You don't see it. Kind of like how the, the, the penis of Osiris, the phallic um, of, you know, the, the freaking, you know, monument in, uh, in, in D.C. is overshadowing the oval office, you know, penis going into the vagina. And there, there's a lot, of, a lot of symbolism dealing with sex and the occult and so on and so forth. Washington, D.C. is littered with it. Oh, I do like a bit of symbolism. Anyway, yeah, so this, this is a good thing. Um, hey, talking of Egypt, I don't know if I've, I've uh, spoken about this much, but uh, one of the things I've been researching recently is yeast. And um, yeast was given to us by the gods of Egypt, wasn't it? Anybody know anything about this? Um, yeah, I, I know some things about this. Uh, I'm not like an expert on it, but I, I do know that the, um, the, uh, when, you, when you take yeast and combine it with um, sugar, what you have is fungus growing inside of you. 
the sugar feeds the fungus, the yeast is the fungus. The cooking process does not kill the fungus and the yeast. No, it's sugar, right. water, and yeast. You you basically making mash for moonshine there, aren't you? Yeah, essentially. That's right. But the but thing is, is, is look at look at everything we eat. Everything we eat okay. is either an alcohol base, a sugar base, or a yeast based. You combine all that together in the body, and what you have is a a breeding ground for fungus and cancer. Okay, so my premise Lovely is that thought, that yeah. was deliberate. Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah. a slow poison. Uh-huh. But not only that, it was a nanotechnology because it influences your consciousness. It drives your consciousness, consciousness lower to just being craving foods and things. And yeah. stuff. And when addictions. people think of technology... Imagine they think of machines, but people don't realize that biology is a form of technology. DNA is a four-bit programming code. That's been proven. I, I need a decompiler for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think the awakening process is. That's what the project is. Yeah. That's what the awakening process okay, so, is. It's the decompiler. <laughs> well, apparently. Okay, so here's the thing. This is what I've gotten recently. Right? That there's 12 levels of our uh, DNA. That's what the 12 strands are. They're not, they're not on the same uh, physical plane. Exactly. They're on like astral level and and emotion and uh, mental level and you know soul level and, and it's when they all turn together and uh, interchange. Uh, when they're all kind of concurrent in the same place, and we're, we, that is, we are together, which means that all of our bodies, <clears throat> all those different ones, are our physical body, our emotional body, our mental body, our, our soul body, our causal body, you know, our personality, are all sitting in the same place, all together. That's what all together means. Well, all hey, together, they fit, now, they all, fit together, all together, now, but all together. Not, not probably not together. all in the same dimension and time space. Well, that's the idea. That's what meditation is. Yeah. yeah. That's where you well, still yourself. You still well, every, from, bring everything to the same point. From and what there, I under, you're, all, your stra all your strands are together. Yeah. From what, from what I understand, as far as actually visually being able to, to see the different strands, the different helixes, it's basically one strand um, per, you know, dimensional level so in the lower 3d you can see two helixes as we've you know gone you know it, with our awareness through you know the upper 3d into the lower 3d we're starting to actually be able to physically see um you know the three and four helixes now and of course you know the majority of the dna is considered to be quote unquote junk dna but no that's just the part of the dna that's in the quantum flux and you know we just can't uh we can't see it on our on our level of reality. As we continue to upshift our consciousness, we're able to see more, and that's why these these other helixes are slowly starting to appear. It's not that they weren't there, and all of a sudden, oh, oh, people are just growing them all of a sudden. Like, wow, they're mutants. Or, no, 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 no. It's just our awareness is able to start seeing more of what we consider to be the quote unquote junk DNA, but it's not junk at all. It's quantum. Quantum foam, yes, and uh, use that for your bid. Well, you know. Anyway, um, so we're we're about uh, ten minutes away from the from the top of this show. Uh, obviously, Dave, you can uh, continue your connection um, on YouTube and everything like that. Um, sure but can. Uh, it's been a fun experiment. How how has everybody been? Has, has everybody had a kind of so well? Obviously, we lost Kirsten, but um, that was due to a different issue. So. Yeah. Um, Eli, uh, General Tate, did you? Uh, what was your experience? Let, let's start with Eli. What was, what's been your uh, sort of uh, quality experience I, of this call? It was pretty good. I mean, you know, the audio quality was good. I had no problem with that. And um, yeah, I just uh, I'm gonna figure out how to to get better audio out of uh, one computer and into the other. Um, right now it's kind of low, but um, for a 
considering I had, what, 15 minutes to figure out all this out and wear it and pipe everything in, I think it went all right. General? Okay. Just wait. Just wait and making sure nobody else has anything to add. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the call's been minus the uh, technical difficulties in the beginning. Um, call's been excellent. As soon as I get everything reconfigured and hooked up with Skype, it's been excellent thus far. The conversation has been good. Everything's been good, and you know, all it's has been weird. well. It's weird though because usually it's Skype giving us issue and you know the Google Hangout where everything usually works most of the time, but you know the universe decided to spin it in reverse for us today. We've also been getting a lot of silver flares too. Um, Katarina and Paul were planning on showing up, but um, they were unable to make it. They did try to load up uh, Google Hangout via um, their cellular, but it wasn't really working all that great where they were. I guess it had to do with the reception or something. I don't know, but things were crashing and whatever. If they were at home, they, they would have been able to, uh, you know, to join us, but they attempted, you know, and it failed, but they're out and about doing stuff. They, they tried. It didn't work, so otherwise they would have been here. Right. Well, there we go. So I, uh, I think I'll, uh, I'll um, put some music on in a little while. Um, thank you very much, Dave, for uh, hosting this. It's been uh, an interesting experiment. Uh, this, uh, this wasn't a strangely well. It took something beyond something. We've gone beyond, uh, beyond communicating. It, uh, the, you know. When we first started doing uh, Skype calls, it was kind of like this. There were lots of problems and, and hang-ups. Now we've got that smooth. We've got, got that layer down. This getting the video layer uh, organized. And you know, uh, what do people see? You know, how can how can it be more like uh, people are seeing? Uh, for instance, uh, me on the call. How would I do that? I'd need to have um, a picture there or something like that, or some sort of representation. <clears throat> yeah, obviously for the full video, um, you would need a little more upload bandwidth than you have. Um, obviously, we we tested that the other day, and it was a really glitchy. Just um, connecting between the two of us, you seem to be able to see my video just fine, but yours was a bit glitchy, and it made the audio a little choppy. And then when you disabled your your video, um, everything was smooth, and you know you could still see mine and whatever. So. On your end, uh, a little bit more upstream would obviously help, but um, just you know, generally speaking, you know the interface seems smooth. Um, anybody with the up upstream and downstream uh, requirements, um, you know, popping into a, a Google Hangout, Google Hangout works as it works, and then I just got my little hookup, and you know, we could you know do what we're doing in simulcast and whatever. So. Um, I think the interface itself is smooth, and the only issues are just you know issues that individuals might have either bandwidth-wise or you know cell phones not working properly with available signal or whatever like Katarina and Paul were having, and you know Kristen needed to deal with you know in-person physical reality circumstance stuff, so that didn't even have to do with technology. That just she had to go do some stuff, and she didn't really have an opportunity to. Uh, you know, to, to let us know. It just all happened kind of suddenly. So, uh, you know, but on the technological level, everything seems to be working fine. And um, we can do this again um, whenever you'd like, and maybe we'll align with uh, more people joining us, but it still hasn't been a bad turnout. We got Dave Kelso, Time Warrior, me, JP, Eli, Rich, and Kristen. So in total, that's... Uh, five-person turnout, which I really don't think is bad. Not at all. No, not too bad at all. Nope, not bad. We gotta get, um, we, we gotta get Goofy on here one of these days if he's got some time. You know, um, uh, the other John, not Riley, but the other one. 
Uh, how, how's John Riley been these days, anyway? I know I talked to Goof the other day, but um, how's how's Slasher, aka John Riley, how's how's he been? So um, uh, let, let's just let's just, before we don't know but, um, John, yeah. who's John Riley. You know, do you want to introduce John Riley before we say goodbye to everybody on the program? Oh um, uh, well, if you if well, you go on if you go on to a PSEC documentary and you scroll through the videos and. You, you know, you, you go to the the playlist section and and uh, to the pointless audio radio show. There's four episodes that we did a while back, and um, you know, you can you can hear all of us, me and Eli and and Slasher, aka John Riley, and then the other John, aka Goofy or Goo Goo, and then Two Man, aka Paul Pelletier. So you can you can you know hear all that and get all the frame of reference you like. You can also go to OspreyNet.info and. Um, Eli said he's he's bringing the older shows back from from back in the day and streaming those, so you could hear you know roundtable radio and and all that good stuff too. So yeah, yeah, all that's all right. on the talk stream. We we're working on that. Okay, can you give us the URL then, um, Eli? Um, ospreynet.info and um, ospreyradio.org. Excellent. And uh, General Tate, do you have a, a broadcast medium? Uh, I do. I post a lot of journals on uh, DeviantArt. Uh, I have a TSU account, a Facebook, and I do have a YouTube. And the YouTube is USMC Tate. The DeviantArt is also General Tate, just like my Skype account. Um, TSU goes under my personal name, Richard Hamilton, and my Facebook is personal, but I do run a group called NASA Headquarters on there, which I also have on DeviantArt as well, and I post a lot of really cool stuff on there. And that's pretty much how you can find me. Yeah, And you could also go on Facebook um, and search for Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy, and you will inevitably find all of us. You will find me, you will find Rich, you will find Katerina, you will find all of us. So, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, joining us in this... Uh, experimental connection this has been ever beyond uh, join us next week uh, join me tomorrow we got Lance White Zany Mystic from BBS Radio old school and uh, next week oh I forgot next week I got some cool people coming um, go to everbeyondradio.com and you see who's coming along good night everyone Okay, I've got to drop this call. Thanks very much, guys. Good night, everybody. Yep. Yep. See ya. Okay. I'm going to drop the um, Osprey carrying the show. Back well, we are still broadcasting on PSEC if you wanted to keep going. Um, actually, i got to get off here. All right. I'll be on here for... I'll be here for a few more minutes, but I'm going to go ahead and say goodnight on the radio, and I'll talk to you guys for a minute. Right. Sound good? Yeah, okay. sounds fine. And Kristen's just uh, messaging me on Facebook at the same time. Interesting that right. she's synchronistically aligning back at the end of Ever Beyond. <laughs> all right. Um, Slasher... He's he's uh, doing all right. He just had a new kid. Um, yeah, he's he hadn't really been involved with Osprey since he went crazy, and um, I can't really let him come back. When, um, yeah. Long story there. I mean, you know, we still talk. We still friends. We still good, but. Uh, as for him being a part of Osprey, he's no longer a part of Osprey. And when you're not recording this, I'll go into more in depth and tell you about it. Sound good? Yeah, sounds good. All right. All right. Well, I'm gonna get off here. I gotta work on some websites and stuff before I head to you know head to bed. And uh, yeah, I'll let you on Facebook. All right. It was nice to meet you, Commander. Have a good one. Yep. 
Yep, nice to meet you too. Uh, night, guys. Yeah, I'm just um, touching base with Kristen on a few things she's updating. Rich, you can uh, rant and ramble about stuff while I'm doing this because I'm just trying to to get. No, oh, I was I was just gonna say I shall be right back. Oh, okay. So this is an interesting transitional moment here. Got all different levels of communication coming in. Yep, so I'm chatting with Kristen, waiting for Rich to come back. Daphne Dugan messaged me. Got all sorts of things kind of coming at me at once here, and we're going to figure out whether or not we're going to finish the discussion or, you know, cut this off or what we're going to do. I don't know exactly what we're going to do yet. Shut my door here. Let's see. Yep, sorry about this awkward silence, folks, as we're waiting for Rich to return, and I'm getting hit in multiple directions of, uh, of contact here. I hope everybody um, enjoyed the, you know, the, the show we did, uh, you know, for the last hour, two hours, whatever the heck it's been. Yeah, it's been two hours. Wow. Okay, five to seven, yeah, two hours. The time just goes by.
Yeah, I think I'm going to cut off the uh, live broadcast here. Um, I don't know when Rich is going to be back, and um, I'm getting distracted. So thanks, everybody, for watching, and um, hope everybody had a good time, and we'll do this again soon. Catch you all later. Peace out.